Hey guys, how's it going? TechFibs here. In today's video, we're going to be going through 20 macOS tricks that can save you time. It's a bit of a long video, so make sure to get comfy, but also make sure to watch until the end, as there are loads of small, nifty tips and tricks that you might not have known about, and they can be useful. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be going through some tricks in Finder that can make your experience a lot better. Okay, so first of all, we have sidebar customization. As you can see, the sidebar on the side of my window is uh, very simple and clean, and uh, it only has the things that I really use, such as recent downloads and maybe iCloud Drive. All the uses like tags and stuff that's there by default, I've removed them and they're just gone because I never use them. To change what's there, select Finder on the top left of your screen and then select Preferences. After doing this, a window will appear and then from here you select the sidebar section. Here you can tick what you'd like to see there, so you just tick the things that you want and untick the things that you don't want. And if you want to move the order of the things that are in your sidebar, then you just click and drag them up and down however much you want. Next up, you can also change what is in the toolbar at the top of the Finder window. So that's where all the little icons that show what kind of view you want, whether to make a new folder and stuff like that are. To change what's there, right click where the icons are and then select Customize Toolbar. Then a drop down will appear and here you can drag icons into the toolbar and if you don't want them in the toolbar then you just drag them off of the window and they just go poof and they're gone forever. Now this next thing, I personally didn't know about it until I started research about this video and it's something called Quick Look. For those of you who don't know, Quick Look essentially allows you to preview any type of file before you actually open it. And to use it, you just select any file, say an image, and then just press space. Then a window appears that shows a larger version, and to exit it, all you do is press escape. It's really simple. For example, you can select a PDF and you can scroll on it, or you can select an application and see details like how much storage it takes up and stuff like that, all without having to like go into settings or anything, and it's just really useful. I use it all the time now. You can also resize uh, the window in Quick Look, so to make it full screen and you just press escape to go out the full screen, and you can also then open it with the default app by clicking open with and then that app in quotations. Something really small but quite useful in Finder is the ability to see the file path that you've taken, so like what folders you've gone through and stuff like that, and if you do option command P then it will toggle it on or off. Something small but just quite useful to have. Another small thing you can also have at the bottom of your Finder window is uh, the status bar, which shows you how much storage is being taken up or how many files you have selected when you select some files. And to toggle it, you do command forward slash, and it's not that it's something especially useful, but I do use it sometimes, and it's more useful than going into settings every single time. Moving on, something that I find really annoying is when trash accumulates in the trash can, and I have to try and remember to empty it. I know, such a first world problem. Well, there is a way to set your trash in macOS to automatically empty after 30 days of something being put in it. And uh, as most of the time, if you've put it in there, you probably don't need it after a month. To turn it on, again, select Finder in the top left. So go to Preferences, and uh, when the window comes up, instead go to the Advanced section. T here, you can tick Automatically Empty Bin after 30 days, and then obviously it's on. However, it is understandable why you wouldn't want to do this, as maybe you've de accidentally deleted something important, and you might want it back or something like that, but instead of going into the trash every time and then clicking empty, you can do shift command backspace to delete it just from finder straight away. It will ask you of course if you're sure and then you, here you can do it and it's probably better and safer than uh, having it automatically do it because you might not know about it. Okay, so now let's move on to Safari as if you have a Mac it's most likely what you use to search the internet. A useful shortcut to know in Safari is Command L, which brings down the search menu and so shows you the full website address. I know most of you are probably thinking, well, why would I do that? I can just click on it, can't I? 
Well, what's useful about this is that it lets you just type straight away. So I find it useful if I just want to quickly search something from whatever I'm in. So I just do command L and then type whatever it is. Yeah, more first world problems for you, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this next one works on other browsers like Chrome as well, but uh, I am first found it in Safari, so I'm just going to say it's for Safari. The next trick is something called find on page, which as the name suggests, lets you find a select word or phrase on a page by letting you search it. If you do command F, a small search bar will appear below your bookmarks and tabs. And uh, on here you can type a word and it will highlight it on the page in a bright yellow color so it's hard to miss. Now this next feature is Safari exclusive and it's really underrated and it's called Reader View. Most people they either don't know about Reader View or they know about it but they just don't use it for some reason. Reader View is basically a way that refines whatever website you're on to just the plain text and maybe a few images. And it's useful for on things like articles where the website just gets plastered with ads top to bottom and it becomes difficult to read whatever you were actually trying to read. And yeah, you could use an ad blocker, but Reader View is just built into Safari by default. To toggle it on or off, all you do is click the icon with the four lines on the left of the search bar and straight away it will turn whatever website you were on to just the core text and images. On the other side of the search bar when it's on there's an AA icon and here you can change the size, the font and the background color as well if you prefer to read it like in a more comfortable way. And for those of you who are really lazy you can set it to default to reader view whenever it's possible because most websites do offer reader view. And you can do it by right clicking the four lines icon and then selecting reader websites preferences. From here then you turn on the when visiting other websites option at the bottom on and uh, from now on whenever you go onto any website it will try and show you the reader view version. Much like in iOS where you can save websites to your home screen, in macOS you can also save websites from Safari to your dock. The basic way of doing it is dragging the icon when you go to the full website address and if you drag it to your dock and it will automatically take you to that website whenever you click on it. But the issue is, is there will always be one of them ugly globe icons and the name will just be whatever the website gives it. The better way to do it is instead dragging it to the desktop first. From here you can rename it by right clicking on it and then pressing rename and changing it to whatever you want to. And you can also change the icon too. To change the icon, go to Google and find an image that you want to represent that shortcut and then copy it with Command C. I recommend finding one with a transparent background because uh, otherwise it will have like an ugly white background or square around it and uh, just purely because it looks nicer. After finding a suitable image, then select the website shortcut on the desktop and then do Command I. This will bring up a window that shows the details about it but all you need to do is click the small page icon with the Safari symbol on it. Then do command V to paste the image that you have copied and it should change the icon to that image. And finally, then you drag it to your dock and to quickly access that website, you just click on it. You can also delete the desktop icon if you don't want it there too. These next few features are just system wide ones and they are just genuinely useful. So make sure to make note of them. On macOS and iOS, there's a feature called Lookup, which is really handy. It basically gives you meaning of whatever word or thing that you selected and gives you definition, Wikipedia articles, and basically just general information about it. All you need to do is select the said word or phrase and then right click. At the top of the menu, then it will come up with Lookup and the thing in quotations. Afterwards, then a small window will appear uh, with at first a dictionary definition and thesaurus for whatever word it is you searched on. But along the bottom, if you go across, then there are other options such as Siri knowledge, which is basically just Wikipedia. Or you can find films of that name, places of that name, and it's basically just spotlight search, but without actually doing spotlight search. In general, I'd just say it's handy for dictionary definitions to find it quickly, but uh, it can be useful in other circumstances too. Now also like iOS, macOS also has its own version of the predictions on the keyboard. 
And I'm not talking about the MacBook Pro's touch bar because that's something else. If you press F5 on the keyboard, then it will come up with suggestions of what you could type next. You can then select the word you want by clicking on it or just using the arrow keys. And then after selecting it, just press space. No need to type anything out anymore. However, what's even more useful about this is that if you start typing a word and then press F5, it will give you all the possible ways that you could have a word. It's probably only useful if you don't know the spelling of a word, but hey, it's cool and you probably didn't know about it, so you learned something new. For those of you who love emojis, there is a way to use them on a Mac. If you do Control command space then a small window appears with a long list of all the emojis that you can use. But what's really nice is that you can search up specific emojis. So for example, say you type love, it will come up with all the love related emojis. Or if you type hands, it will show all the hand emojis and yeah, it's just useful. For people who type a lot in other languages, you can hold down the vowels on the keyboard that may have accents on them. And if you hold them down, then it will come up with a little menu above the letter with numbers for each option. And uh, if you hold it and then press the number for the specific symbol, then it will just convert it to that. And it's quite useful if you type in like Spanish or French or anything with accents. Something I find really annoying is when you paste something from online into a word document or pages or notes or anything and it comes out in like a different font a different size and a different color it really kills me inside every time well luckily there is a way to make that not happen if you're someone like me who has that too you can do shift option command v i know it's very long but if you do that, then it will just paste it into whatever font, size, and color you automatically have. So you don't have to go and uh, resize it, change the color, and change the font so it matches in with whatever else it is. If humanity's done something right, that's what they've done right. Unlike most Windows computers, which have a dedicated print screen button on their keyboards, the Mac does it slightly different. Uh, to take a whole screenshot like of the whole screen, uh, you can do shift command three and it will just do it much like an iOS and then the little preview comes in in the corner But there is a better way that you can Have a variety of options before you even take the screenshot if you instead do shift command five So replace the three with five then a small bar will appear at the bottom of your screen with the following options the first option does what the previous shortcut does, so it takes a screenshot of the whole screen. The next option lets you take one of just a selected window, so say you have a few windows open, you can just click on whatever window you want a screenshot of. The third option lets you crop a section of your screen to take a screenshot of, and this one's by far the most useful as it means that you don't have to do anything afterwards. There are also two more options that don't show up because I was screen recording, uh, but they are full screen recording. So the first option records the whole screen and the second option records just a selected cropped portion of your screen. For those of you who don't know, Spotlight Search is a way to search just anything on your device or just general knowledge. Uh, but there is something that you can do with it that makes it really handy for maths equations and just general conversions. First of all, if you type in any equation, so say 3F3, it will return the answer and that means that you don't need to even go into the calculator app to find it, you just type it into the spotlight. It works for the most basic equations, so add, minus, times and divide. Uh, but what is even cooler is that you can do conversions of uh, amounts from metric to imperial. So say you can do kilometers to miles, liters to gallons, kilograms to ounces, which is handy because no one can actually settle on one standard. It can also do currencies too, so say you type a thousand USD, then it will, it will come up with uh, common currencies that you, you can convert to and what the equivalents are. Spotlight search is something really underrated and people don't use it that often, so it's nice that there's some hidden features in it too. If you're someone like me who loves having their apps in full screen mode, then you're going to love this feature. For those of you who don't know, F3 or Mission Control will show you all of the windows on the current desktop and split them all out, as well as the other full screen windows along the top bar. And you can also add other desktops too if you prefer to have more space. 
But for the full screen windows, you can of course do F3 to go and switch to them. But if you have a magic mouse, something really cool that you can do is swipe with two fingers across it and it will go across the windows, much like on the iPhone 10, where there's the bar at the bottom and you can just swipe across to the other things you have open. It's weird because I discovered this just purely by accident. Like I was just messing around, like scrolling and it was like, whoa, what happened? And I thought it was just Mac OS Catalina messing around, but no, it turns out you learn something new even if you're messing it up. And finally, there is also a really quick way to log off of your iMac. And it's handy because I use it all the time if I'm in a hurry and have to quickly leave. If you do shift command Q, then it will come up with the log off window saying if you're sure that you want to log off and if you want to reopen windows and obviously you can cancel or just continue. A similar shortcut is control command Q, which just locks your iMac. And so it keeps it on, but puts it in sleep mode and it also keeps your user logged in which is handy if I just go for a break or something like that. And that's it for this video. Thank you to everyone who watched until the end. I appreciate all of you because it was definitely a long one. And uh, make sure to give the video a like if you liked it. And a subscribe would be very appreciated as it supports the channel. This is Textbooks here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.